Oh, hi. Let's talk about heating needs. We need temperatures in our homes that allow us to relax, to reduce the stress on our bodies. How much energy that requires depends on the way our buildings exchange heat with the environment, the balance of heat loss and heat gain. Let me explain this in more detail. We have to consider transmission heat loss, QT, the heat exchange through our thermal envelope, walls, floors, windows, roofs. To this, we need to add ventilation heat loss, QV, heat that escapes with either purposeful ventilation events or travels with air through cracks in the envelope. Once we've assessed all losses, we need to consider heat gains. Gains from the sun that shines through our windows, QS, and internal gains, QI, the waste heat from appliances and the heat that our bodies are emitting. The surface temperature of our bodies is typically warmer than the air in our houses during the winter months when we need heating, so we're all walking, talking heaters. We can calculate how these heat gains are offsetting the transmission and ventilation heat loss. When this calculation leaves losses that cannot be offset by gains, we have a heating requirement and we need to add heat to our system. Let's look at this equation more closely. On the loss side, we have transmission and ventilation. And on the other side, gains are from solar and internal sources, so-called free heat, as in you don't have to pay for these. But often, not all of these gains can be utilized to offset losses. For example, a well-insulated building is easily heat-saturated. When the sun shines all day, any excess in solar gain will have to be ventilated away to not cause overheating rather than being stored in the structure for later. The amount being ventilated away can therefore not be used to offset the losses that occur after sunset. This is expressed with the utilization factor eta, which will be large for poorly performing houses, sponges that soak up every bit of heat, whereas in a high performance building, heat saturation is more easily achieved, but the utilization of free heat will be less as a result. Overall though, heating requirements are significantly reduced in houses with excellent insulation, which curbs transmission heat loss and controlled ventilation with heat recovery and an airtight building envelope, minimizing ventilation heat loss. Think of the heating requirement QH as a mortgage and the free heat, solar and internal as your savings. If you can offset most of the money needed to pay for your new home with savings, your mortgage can be very small. When financing your house, reducing the cost and increasing savings are both valid strategies. But when it comes to energy use in your house, shrinking the loss side of our equation is a far better strategy than trying to increase gains to get to a nearly zero heating requirement. Increasing solar gains has negative implications for summer comfort. It will also be costly as windows are the most expensive part of the building envelope per square meter. Increasing internal gains is similarly problematic as this would require inefficient lighting and appliances or increasing your family size for the sake of gaining more heat from warm bodies, which makes no sense to me. Plus, increased internal gains also contribute to overheating during the warmer months of the year. I hope this has given you an overview of how the heating needs of houses come about. Kakita no iakoto.